Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Gitgo at Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. In this episode, I will uh, show you something called shoestringing. Now, before I continue, I must warn you that shoestringing is uh, one of the most difficult uh, tricks to perform in Open Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. So, this will be uh, this tutorial may be a little bit difficult to follow. Uh, shoestringers, I'm also quite uh, quite new to shoestringing, so uh, please bear that in mind. But I'll try to explain it in a understandable uh, manner. Now, what is shoestringing? Uh, shoestringing is basically uh, splitting your trains in half. And because the train speed is normally calculated uh, by the effects every car has on the speed, uh, that means that both halves of the train uh, will both have the same speed. But you'll see later what uh, kind of uh, things you can do with it. Now, why is it called shoestringing? I have no idea, but uh, someone called it that and the name uh, stuck. So now this trick is called shoestringing. So, uh, first off, I'll show you a simple demonstration of how to uh, split a train. So let's use uh, the steel twister. The brakes at 14 km per hour. I tested these settings before and they worked well. So uh, You'll see later what uh, I'll try to accomplish here. So in here we'll make a hill and we'll remove a bit of track here. Here we'll make an S-Band and we'll complete the track again. Here we'll remove the S-Band and we'll build it again. And we'll complete the track again. Now with Tile Inspector we'll make sure that the S-band is actually the bottom track piece. So you can see two track pieces on this tile. Um, a track piece uh, ID of zero is always a, a straight track piece. So you can see it if I make this piece higher, you can see that the straight track piece uh, moves up. Now we want the S-band to be uh, lower in the list here. And on this side, we want the straight track piece to be lower in the list. You'll see why later. And here we'll make a little hill. Um, we'll need an entrance and an exit here. Now, you'll now see what I try to accomplish with this. Uh, oh, wait. I forgot something, I still have a cheat on disable vehicle limits. Also note that to build these tracks through each other, you need to have the disable clearance checks cheat on. Okay, um, let's, we need one train. Also uh, open Rollercoaster cost tycoon 2 has an option to test tracks without having a complete uh, circuit. So, as you can see now, actually the... I paused the game now. Um, because this uh, S-Band was lower in the list when, uh, when you checked in Tile Inspector, um, if the coaster had enough speed, and it would have been here, the entire train would have gone on the track with the S-Band. But only half of the train passed this track piece. When it went up the hill, and when it went back, that me means that the the back half of the train actually went back on the original track, and only the front half of the train went on this track. And now this car will continue on this track, and this car will continue on this track. And you can see that. Uh, because this car doesn't have enough speed to go up the hill and because both halves of the train will always have the same speed uh, means that this train will could also, uh, also move back now. 
Now, um, you may be wondering how to use this in a useful way. Um, now, because both halves of the train will always have the same speed, if we make a chain lift here, by the way, I turned on the cheat for allowed chain lifts on all track pieces, so we can just do something silly here. So basically I have a really long chain lift now. And let's make this track vertical. Like this. Alright, and if you look now, um, again the trains will split here, and normally this uh, this back half wouldn't make it up the hill here, because it doesn't have enough speed. But now there's a chain lift here, and because the front car will be on the chain lift, uh, it will, should actually drag the train up this hill without having a chain lift on this vertical track. So let's see what happens. The front car will just travel up the chain lift and the back car, because they'll have the same speed, will just follow the speed of the front car. And I paused here at an unfortunate moment. But anyway, we can uh, continue this, uh, this shenanigans, for example, um, because the uh, one, the one half of the train will go down here, this vertical track. That means uh, I can probably stop the chain lift here and probably start a large half loop here. Because with the speed it gains from this vertical part, it should be able to make it over the loop. Anyway, I could continue this track here, uh, but I actually prepared a uh, track here already and it's probably more uh, useful to just watch uh, this track. I will speed past the first uh, splitting section because uh, the train moves quite slowly here. Alright, now here I made the chain lift like I did in the other example. Um, I'll speed it up a bit. So here uh, it actually starts moving up the loop. Uh, this one goes down the vertical track and it actually <laughs> barely makes it through the loop with the speed it gained from this drop. Um, here's another funny thing. Uh, you would think this uh, part of the coaster will crash here, but actually because the other, uh, the other half of the train goes up this vertical track, this one will actually, well, you could just use it to see what happens. <laughs> it will actually just slow down enough that it doesn't uh, crash here. And now uh, they will both just uh, continue their uh, shenanigans. And here I made a track where the trains uh, will join again, but uh, it's really tricky to get the timing right on this, because both uh, halves of the track uh, need to traverse exactly the same uh, length of uh, track and yeah that's just really difficult to get right and I always uh, screw this up so as you can see they both merged into each other now and the train actually became a bit shorter but yeah they will still finish the track but uh, yeah this is the hardest part uh, if you make a coaster like this uh, getting them to merge uh, correctly it's just a pain in the ass because she did exactly the same amount of track for both uh, for both halves of the train. Um, so yeah, usually uh, when, when people make coasters like this, uh, they usually run for a few cycles before they get stuck or they crash. Um, there are examples of coasters that are merged perfectly, and one one. Uh, one version of uh, a coaster like this, actually uh, at the joining section it put the back half of the coaster in front of the front half and after it arrived at the station uh, the back half would actually be in front of the station but uh, then when it went through the coaster again the front half and back half would be reversed again and the coaster would be normal again 
and it would be joined again perfectly. But yeah, I have uh, no idea if that always works. Uh, I haven't made too many of these. And I don't think this uh, application of the trick is uh, too useful. So yeah, um, this is one way to use shoestringing. But now we get to the actual uh, useful part of uh, shoestringing and the way it's uh, normally used. The way it's normally used is for making uh, custom flat rides. So in other words, uh, usually there's a circular part of the track where a train just looks like it uh, spinning around indefinitely but actually at some point it will stop and it will allow guests to get in and get out so there are actually two uh, ways to do this uh, i will first show you uh, a way to uh, split the train using the tile inspector so let's make a nice and long station here Actually, it can be shorter for this method. Um, here I'll make a... First I'll make a straight piece. Here I'll make an S-band. And let's just say we want a circular track above here where we want our coaster to uh, run around. So, uh, we'll make a track here um, I'll actually make a merge a track here just so we can later make the original ride invisible all right and now I will just quickly remove the S-Band for now. And this will be the control track. We'll see what I mean with this later. And now I will rebuild the S-Band. Okay. Um, I already checked previously and on this circular track you can fit, uh, I believe it was 22 cars of a junior roller coaster train. So we'll disable vehicle limits and we'll make a coaster with 22 cars. Uh, 23 I mean. Because we'll split off the first one. Okay, um, we actually want the front car to follow the straight track. So we'll make sure that the straight piece is on the bottom here in the list. So here's the straight piece, it's on the bottom in the list. And we'll probably need an entrance and an exit. And we'll just test the right. Okay. The front car is now on this uh, track. And if I pause the game now, and if we uh, change the track order now, the other trains should follow the other track. There we have it. So yeah, I changed the order. First, the uh, Train, the order was set so that the train would follow the straight part of the track but while the front car was on the on this track piece I actually switched the order so the rest of the track now follows the rest of the train now follows the other track and if we continue like this fast forward it a bit All right, but well, now we have, uh... oh yeah, <laughs> this is the annoying part about this method. After you change the track order, you should change it back or else the front car will also go to this uh, part of the track and that's something we don't want. 
So let's redo this. Yeah, now you immediately see why this is an annoying method to uh, split your trains because you can uh, mess up uh, easily. All right, and when the other train, the rest of the train has passed, we'll change the uh, track order back. Okay, this uh, should be. I should have done this. Uh, this is probably the correct method. And there we go. So yeah. Um, we can actually make a queue here. Let's make it here so more guests will see it. And let's make them ignore uh, intensities for a bit. And as you now may see, um, some guests have actually entered this uh, part of the ride. So yeah, um, the front car is now in the station. And because uh, it's shoe strength, uh, well, it's actually part of one train, so if the front car is in the station, uh, the game considers the entire train in the station. So that's why these guests are all able to to enter this uh, to enter this part of the ride. So yeah, now normally, um, let's go to the arbitrary uh, ride type change the sheet. Normally, this part of the train would be invisible, or it would be hidden underground. That. and you would put a nice building around this and yeah it would look just look like a custom a flat ride and by modifying the chain lift speed um, of course which you can only do if it's actually again in the coaster okay. let's uh, unlock the operating limits now it's actually a lot faster like that. Now, there's an, another uh, annoying thing about this method is that uh, it may actually cause uh, it may actually cause the stat calculation function to get uh, to get stuck. I'm not sure if it will actually happen here, but yeah, there's a. Uh, there's an infinite loop in this uh, in this ride, and the stat calculation function uh, does not like that, and sometimes it will get stuck in the loop, and then for none of your rides in the park, the stats will get uh, recalculated, and that's usually something you don't uh, you don't really want. So um, I will show you now show you another method to uh, to accomplish this, and that method. Uh, is uh, is a lot better, but it is uh, more. Yeah, it's also tricky to uh, to perform. Okay, now I will show you the proper way of uh, shoe stringing. Let's first uh, disable the rain again. Okay, um, this coaster uh, that I will make now uh, will also be custom flat ride, but it will consist of three parts. So first we have the original station with the splitting track. Uh, above the station, just like the previous one, we'll make the circular track where the coaster will end up. And we'll also have a control track where the first car of the coaster will be uh, going around in circles and where we will control the speed. So first we'll make the uh, original track. And here we'll want to uh, make a split in the track. Uh, 
Okay, so what I did now here is uh, this is a, this is actually the splitting track. So when the train arrives here, um, it will go up slightly, and then the front car uh, will actually uh, split off. The front car will continue on the bottom track, and the rest of the train will be on this track here. So let's make sure that the right piece is uh, okay. This piece, the piece going down, should be on the bottom, so that's what the front uh, car will follow. And here we'll just make a backwards track. And here we'll split off uh, part of the track. Now let's make sure um, this coaster will also follow the correct track. That should be okay. And here we'll make some space for the train to be able to back up. Now in here we'll make a part where the coaster can go to the yeah to the circular track. Here I'll make a second coaster. Actually I have to make sure that it merges here. So let's do that. Alright. This is the traditional merging method, so you just have to make sure that you have exactly the same track piece here and then it will merge. And I will have to make sure that it continues on to the yellow track. So the yellow track is... Uh, so yeah, we have two uh, track pieces here at a height of 25, so we have the blue track piece and we have the yellow track piece. We want it to go to the yellow track piece, so we put the yellow one at the bottom. Okay, uh, so we made the splitting track. I hope it works. We have the circular track at the end, and now we need a control track. So let's make a, another S band here. And we'll make a straight piece here. And so the front car will go backwards here we want it uh, it will go here on the s-band and here it will reverse and it should go on the s-band here okay that one's on the bottom so it will go on the s-band there and here we'll make uh, our control track well, we could actually make a station here Let's uh, enable chain lifts on all track pieces. We want it to go to the red track. So we put the red track on the bottom here. Okay. Um, let's make it a little bit longer. We know that, well I know, that the 22 cars fit on this circular track. So we'll disable the vehicle limits and we make it so that there's 23 cars on this train. Uh, we'll need an entrance and an exit. And then we can, actually I'll also put in entrance and exit on the control track and now we can test the ride we'll speed it up a bit now the front car should split off and looks like that worked now the rest of the train will back up I may have made this track a little bit too short yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah. 
the problem now was that the front car didn't go backwards enough. So we could actually make this track a little bit more to the back. Or we could uh, change the location of this junction, but uh, this is probably the fastest. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, and the front car should now go on the control track. Alright, perfect. Now it stops there because it was in the station and now it should just continue on this track because the front car is on the chain lift and that will actually make, give this uh, train uh, the velocity that it needs. And there we have it. So the reason I put this uh, this control track and this uh, splitting track on different tracks is that you can now easily make them invisible using the arbitrary ride types uh, cheat. Lift. And I'll change this one to a lift as well. And there we have it. Uh, now normally uh, you would make this part of the track uh, invisible. You could even make a building here. Now let's quickly make a entrance and exit path. Now we cannot actually open the right now because it's not a full circuit. Uh, we can test the right in Open Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 because Open Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 allows for testing unfinished rides. So we should probably um, show all operating modes and change it to yeah, let's let's change it to both higher mode. And now we can test the ride. And there we have it. We have our cars here on this part of the track. And now when we open it, uh, guests will open through this uh, entrance and exit. Um, now, the reason this ride works um, is because, um, let me make the track visible again. What happens? Uh, when you merge a ride and your train actually goes to a station of the other ride. So for example, here we have station one of the control track and here's station one of the original ride. Now, if a train of the original ride stops on station one of another ride, the guests will actually uh, enter and exit from this, from this entrance and they will also use this exit for the ride even though the coaster is on a different uh, station. But yeah, that's just how the behavior is of uh, stations with merged ride. Uh, for example, if this ride had another station, station two, and the train would stop at station 2, then the guests would actually enter and exit from uh, station 2 of the original ride. Well, now it doesn't have a second station, so I don't know what would happen. Maybe uh, the game would crash, I don't know. But as you can see, um, guests are actually entering and exiting from this entrance and this exit, and they are entering this ride. Now, probably... Uh, you should probably play a bit with the location of the entrance and the exit uh, and the location of your uh, ride. I just now put it like this because uh, it's easy to demonstrate it like this. Normally this uh, track would be on the ground or would be enclosed in a building. Um, you can do it however you want. Um, now I used the junior roller coaster um, cars. You could, for example, make a train out of uh, Virginia real uh, cars. That usually looks really great. Um, you could use the articulated wooden coaster cars. That's also often used. Uh, one type that's really fun to use for these kind of rides is the suspended swinging coaster. Because they will actually uh, swing outwards when they're on a track like this. And, of course, uh, something you can also do is... Uh, Let's change to a different ride type. 
Let's unlock the operating limits. Uh, it's actually in the station now, so that's why it uh, why it uh, doesn't have why it stopped. Now I changed the lift speed, and <laughs> now they're going a lot faster through these uh, curves. Anyway, <laughs> this is just uh, basic shoe stringing. Uh, I understand if this tutorial was uh, difficult to follow. Um, yeah, shoe stringing is really one of the most difficult uh, tricks to do in. Uh, Rollercoaster Tycoon 2, and it's uh, even more difficult to get it to work correctly. But when it uh, works correctly, you can do really cool stuff with this. Anyway, that was it for this uh, tutorial. <laughs> I hope uh, it will be useful uh, for you. I can understand if you're not going to uh, want to try this, because it's, uh, like I said, it's a difficult trick. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, see you again in the next tutorial. See you later.